Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and we are ready for activity four on the Tetrix Prism programming guide. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. We are covered in the first three, we covered blinking the red lights, moving the DC motors, moving the servos, and now we're gonna move from actually outputs and moving things to inputs with sensors. Now sensors give us the ability to actually uh, read information or bring in information from our environment. So that's what allows us to kind of make intelligent decisions based on what's going on around us. So they become very important for us in um, the robotics realm and making smart machines. So we're going to start with our line finder sensor. So let's go ahead and gather up what we need. We do need, obviously, our PRISM uh, programmable controller. We need our charge battery. We need our wiring harness to power on the uh, controller. We need our USB cable. We also need two new things. We need our line, Grove line finder sensor uh, with the complete cable. And we need actually something that we can test the sensor with. We need some kind of a white background with a contrasting black uh, could be tape, could be black marker, something that gives us a, a really good contrast between black and white. Doesn't have to be very big for this, but just something that allows us to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and make my connections. I want to go ahead and connect my sensor into digital port number three. This one right here on our um, controller board. That only goes in one way. Got my sensor on the other end of that. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my cable to my USB so that I'm ready when I hit my download. And now we're ready to go ahead and talk about uh, opening our sketch. So again, we wanna go to in our software. Once we've launched that, we wanna go up to our uh, file examples and we wanna go down to Tetrix Prism. This is getting started activity number four intro to line finder. Choose that one and the software should open up the window if it's not already uh, open. Um, and we are ready to look at uh, what we've got in our sketch and build on that knowledge base. So what we had in the, in the past was we, we talked about um, as part of the, the structure of a basic sketch, we want to look at this time and it's something that we've seen each time we've opened our activities, but we haven't talked much about. And that's the setup function um, that is right up here uh, at the top of our sketch and the, the loop or the main loop. Now, these are two of the most fundamental structures that you see in every sketch. We haven't talked to, about them up to now, but we need to go ahead and make sure everybody understands what's involved with those. Now, the setup function comes right after our include statements and our ob object declaration, like we've talked before, those two things right up here. And basically what the setup uh, allows us to do is uh, put in this functions or parts of code that we only need to declare one time. Uh, these are things that, uh, that's the simplest way to think about it. If you need to start something, but you only need to declare it at the very beginning, that's something that typically would go in the setup area of the, um, the sketch or the program. And then uh, below that, um, you have the main loop. Now, I do want to go back and, and remind everybody that one of the main things that we want to have in all of our sketches because of the, um, the library that we've included, the PRISM library, is our uh, prism.prismbegin function. And this basically is going to uh, enable or set up our green start button. So that's something that we typically would have in all of our prism sketches, but we don't, it's important we don't want to forget it. Um, moving down to our main loop, these are things that typically are going to be the main body of our code. Uh, and typically could include a lot of different things, but they're the things that we want to happen over and over uh, as part of our uh, main code in this main loop. Um, so those are the two functions. That loop is where you're gonna probably be working with most of your code most of the time in this area. So that's probably the area that people pay probably more attention to. But those are the two main structure elements that are in every sketch that you're going to uh, work at. So let's go ahead and let's uh, upload our, um, execute our code and see what actually happens with this. So. 
Uh, we've got everything connected. We've got our uh, USB connection. We do need to power on our prism. And I'll switch that on. We've got our blue light there. We've got our solid green light here. We're going to go into our software. We're going to verify our code, make sure it's working. And once we get that verification, we're going to click on the upload. I'm going to watch over here on our prism. <laughs> we see the orange data lights. We've got a solid green light there. Now, just a little something different. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this so I can actually use both hands here. And I'm going to move my uh, light and dark surface over here by my sensor. And I'm going to reach down here and I'm going to um, execute the code. And I want you to look in two places. We've got um, <laughs> over here where our red LED, if we look at our comments in our code, what should happen is, is when I hold my sensor over the white area, I should get a, a red LED both on my prism and on my sensor. And when I move that over the black line, both of those LEDs should go out. So that gives me a visual indicator that I'm actually, my sensor is either over white or dark by looking at that LED. Again, as I move it back and forth, I can see the light uh, shining on and off on both my prism and my sensor. So that's kind of uh, the way the code is, is supposed to execute. Again, that gives us a visual indicator that the sensor is actually doing what we expect it to do. So now that we've executed our code, let's talk a little bit about our moving forward part of the, our, our activity. Because we want to, um, again, uh, each time we've, we've um, talked about things in our building or knowledge base about what we've already uh, um, looked at or already tried to, to explore as far as the sketches and, and the syntax there. But we want to talk about the new things that we've introduced in this activity. So um, in this one, if you look in the uh, sketch itself, we've got some new things here that we haven't talked about. We've got basically a new function, a new program structure, and a comparison statement. So let's take them one at a time. The, the new function is this if statement right here. And basically, the if statement is a, essentially uh, a comparison that allows us to test for a certain condition. And what we're saying in this is that we're going to read our line sensor, and if it reads high, then we're going to do something. That's going to be the action that follows that. And you can see that there in our brackets, our curly brackets after our, our function. Um, the comparison or the value that we're looking at tells us what port um, that we want to read our a sensor from right there. And then we're actually in our comparison, the equal equal is uh, basically saying if it equals this, if um, the, the condition we want to test equals this, then we're going to go ahead, if that's true, do our action. Um, the other thing that we um, basically are doing is the, the function that says prism.readLineSensor. That's basically saying look at that input from the sensor itself and determine what that condition is. So you can see there if we have two of those if statements um, right after each other, the first one says that if the sensor is reading high, I want to set my red LED in my prism to the low or off position. And if my prism uh, sensor is reading low, then I want to actually set my LED to high or on. Now, the two conditions, low and high, are uh, concerning about where the sensor is over um, the white background. It's going to be reading low. So that's when we actually turn our red LED on. If it's over at the black line, if it's found the line, it's going to read high. So those are the two uh, conditions. And then we have the delay afterwards that basically just slows that process down because that's going to be repeating time after time. So we want to make sure that it gives it just a little bit of time between the, the each iteration of the loop and how often it reads the sensor. So those are the moving forward elements. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the real world connections. So, um, this is one of those things that, again, it's important when we're working with robotics and we want the robot to be able to make intelligent decisions based on the environment around it. It's important for this, the robot to be able to use sensors and actually uh, sample 
um, the environment and uh, be able to tell what's going on around it. Otherwise, it can't make intelligent decisions. So that's why uh, it's important for us to do that. And robots all over the all, of all kinds and types use this uh, all of the time. Could be even in, uh, sensors in our car that that read the condition of the engine. Uh, sensors are used in all kinds of devices. Um, so th your thermostat in your in your home is go has has a sensor in it that tells that what the current temperature is, and based on that temperature, either turns on the AC or turns on the heat as needed. So sensors are used in all kinds of devices. Um, from a STEM connect, um, uh, connections or uh, concepts, these are things like um, with the light sensor, light reflection and absorption, electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic spectrum uh, technology, could be digital versus analog, the type of uh, information that it's reading, calibration, um, engineering, determining the, the line location or on the surface, um, and then math. We've, we've got data analysis that we're looking at with all of this kind of stuff. So from there, we get to go to the exciting part of that, and that's the hacking the code. And this is where you get to kind of take what you've learned and, and recreate uh, from either from scratch the activity that we just did, just so you learn some of the syntax things that have to go with creating a sketch, or then expanding on those. What are some of the other ways that we could add this into, for instance, our moving, uh, our motor activity, our moving our servos? How could we combine them and make, uh, kind of bring together everything that we've, we've talked about and learned? So I hope that was informational for you. I hope it helped you as you're walking through this whole process of beginning to learn how sensors work with the PRISM. And again, like we always say, have fun out there, build some robots, and come back and we'll do some more.